The need for a heavily armed tank was highlighted for the British Army in 1945, when the Soviet Army unveiled its newly developed heavy tank, the IS-3, at the Berlin Victory Parade. The armies of Britain, France, and the USA realized they had nothing to counter this new threat. In later years, the IS-3 would prove to be a far less threatening tank than originally thought. At the time, however, these armies were concerned. In response, the US would develop the M103, while the French would experiment with the AMX-50. Great Britain would develop the FV-214 Conqueror and FV-215 heavy gun tanks. Decades later, the popular online game World of Tanks, published and developed by Wargaming, was preparing a new British tank line. Due to poor research, or possibly completely intentionally, the top of the tree appeared as the heavy gun tank FV215B, a fictional marriage of a FV215 chassis with the FV214 turret and gun with a fictional engine. Fortunately, Wargaming has withdrawn this fake vehicle, although they replaced it with an equally questionable one. That being said, elements of this tank did exist in one form or another, so these shall be explored. Welcome to a new Tank Encyclopedia voiced article. We would again like to thank all of our patrons for their support and allowing us to do what we love. The patron of this video is Alan Kurtz. Thank you, Alan. A small history is provided for the vehicle by Wargaming. A proposed plan for a heavy tank based on the Conqueror Mark II. Unlike the production model, this modification featured real placement of the fighting compartment never saw production or service. The FV215B is presented as a vehicle of the FV200 series. The FV200s date back to the final stages of the Second World War, when the British War Office was looking for a universal tank. The ancestor of today's main battle tanks, the idea of the universal tank was that one chassis would spawn many variants thus reducing costs, development, and making maintenance and supply far easier. The FV215B is also presented as a variant of the planned FV215, or, to give its long-winded designation, the tank Heavy No. 2 183mm gun FV215. This tank was said to be the replacement of the FV214 Conqueror, or tank Heavy No. 1, 120mm gun, FV214. The term heavy gun tank is a uniquely British designation. It refers to the size and power of the gun, not the size and weight of the tank. Heavy gun tanks were specifically designed to destroy enemy tanks and fortified positions. The Conqueror was the first and only heavy gun tank that Britain would build and put into active service. Based on the FV200 chassis, the Conqueror was an imposing vehicle. It measured 7.62 meters long, not including the gun, 3.99 meters wide, and 3.35 meters tall. It weighed 66 tons, had armor up to 330 millimeters thick, and was armed with the powerful L1 120mm gun. Firing armor-piercing discarding sable rounds, this gun was able to punch through up to 446mm of 55 degree angle steel armor at 900 meters. Entering service in 1955, the Conqueror had a short service life, being retired in 1966 after just 11 years of service. It was replaced by the FV-4201 Chieftain. The next step would have been the FV-215. 
This was in development just as the Conqueror entered full-scale production. This vehicle used a modified chassis that was slightly narrower than the FV214 at 3.6 meters compared to 3.99 meters. The FV215 would also have had a rear-mounted turret and would have been equipped with the powerful L4 183mm gun. To accommodate the rear-mounted turret, the power plant was moved to the center of the vehicle. It would appear that this fake FV215B is based on the hull of the real FV215. The FV215B is basically a rear turreted conqueror, although it is based on the real FV215 chassis as stated before. There was never a B variant of any description planned for the FV215. In-game specifications record the vehicle as weighing 70 tons. This is heavier than both the FV214 and the real FV215 by about 4 tons. Hull armor is listed as 152mm on the front, 102mm on the sides, and 76.2mm on the rear. This is nowhere near accurate. On the real FV215 hull, armor was planned to be 125mm sloped at 59 degrees on the upper glacis and just 44mm on the sides and rear. Despite errors like this, the FV215B does share some accurate parts of its design with both the FV214 and FV215. These include the four-man crew composed of a commander, a gunner, a loader and a driver, the Horstmann suspension system, the turret and integral fire control turret, and the 120mm L1 gun. In-game, the FV215B is equipped with the Rolls-Royce Griffin. This was, in reality, an aircraft engine. While Rolls-Royce aero engines have been adapted for use in armored vehicles, there is no evidence at all to suggest that there was ever a plan to make an AFV variant of the Griffin. An example of a converted Rolls-Royce aero engine is the Meteor, as used in the Conqueror. This was an adaptation of the Merlin, an engine famous for powering the British Spitfire an American Mustang fighter aircraft of World War II. The Griffin was a 37-liter, 60-degree V12 liquid-cooled engine. It was the last V12 aero engine built by Rolls-Royce, with production ceasing in 1955. It was used on such aircraft as the Ferry Firefly, Supermarine Spitfire, and Hawker Sea Fury. The engine produced over 2,000 horsepower in its plane configuration, but in-game it is listed as producing just 950 horsepower. This is not far-fetched, as converted aero engines were often derated for use in armored vehicles. Meteor is an example of this. As the Merlin, it produced up to 1,500 horsepower depending on the model. When derated as the Meteor, it produced just 810 horsepower. The real FV215 was set to be propelled by the Rover M120 No. 2 Mark I, producing 810 horsepower and propelling the vehicle to a top speed of just under 32 km per hour. In this fake tank, the installed Griffin engine is recorded as propelling the vehicle to a top speed of 34 km per hour. While faster than the real FV215, this is the same top speed as the Conqueror, which was propelled by a less powerful engine. As with the real FV215, the engine is mounted centrally, separating the driver, located in the right front corner of the hull, from the rest of the crew in the turret. The Horstman suspension of the FV215B 
is one of the accurate parts of this vehicle. It has been used on all the FV200s, including the Carnarvon and Conqueror, but also on the Centurion. On the FV200s, the suspension system had two wheels per boogie unit. The wheels would be made of steel, measuring approximately 50 centimeters in diameter and constructed from three separate parts. These consisted of an outer and inner half with a steel rim in contact with the track. Between each layer was a rubber ring. The Horstman system consisted of three horizontal springs mounted concentrically, guided by an internal rod and tube. This allowed each wheel to rise and fall independently, although the system did struggle if both wheels rose at the same time. Four bogies lined each side of the hull of the vehicle, giving it eight road wheels per side. There would also be four return rollers, one per bogie. The drive sprockets were relocated at the rear of the running gear, with the idler wheel at the front. Both the turret and main armament of the FV215B were taken straight from the FV214 Conqueror. The main armament of the FV215B consists of the 120mm L1A1 A gun. While there were two versions of the 120mm gun, the L1A1 and L1A2, there was never an A subvariant. Maximum penetration in game is listed as 326 mm. To give its full name, the Ordnance Quick Firing 120 mm tank L1 gun was an extremely powerful weapon with dimensions to match. Muzzle to breech, it measured 7.4 meters and alone weighed 3 tons. The gun was designed to fire both armor-piercing discarding sabo and high-explosive squash head ammunition. The in-game penetration of 326mm is far lower than that of the real gun. Firing the APDS round at a muzzle velocity of 1,433 meters per second, the L1 could penetrate up to 446mm of 55 degree angle steel armor at 900 meters. Elevation is listed as plus 15 to minus 7 degrees. This is accurate to the Conqueror, although a limiter prevented the gun from depressing past minus 5 degrees. The turret is a fairly accurate representation of the one designed for the FV214 Conqueror. Even so, the armor values are way off. In-game, it is listed that the turret is protected by 254mm of armor on the face, 152.4mm on the sides, and 101.6mm on the rear. In reality, it is hard to pinpoint the exact armor thicknesses on the Conqueror's turret, thanks largely to conflicting sources. We do know that the armor on the turret was between 240 and 340 mm sloped at 60 degrees on the face with a 239 mm mantlet. The sides were 89 mm thick while the rear was 51 mm thick. A couple of features unique to the Conqueror turret also remain present. One of these is the fire control turret, located at the rear of the turret. This replaces the traditional commander's cupola and is a self-contained unit that can rotate independently of the main turret. The FCT features an integral rangefinder for use by the commander. He would scan around looking for targets, range them, and then pass the data onto the gunner who would then engage. The other feature is the hatch on the right wall of the turret. This hatch is the ejection port for spent main gun casings. They were ejected from the turret via the troublesome Mullins gear, a piece of equipment 
that frequently broke down on the Conqueror. The FV215B is, without a doubt, a fake vehicle. It is not the worst of Wargaming's fake tank crimes, as many of the components used in its design did exist. In reality, there would not have been a need for this tank. The real FV215 was designed to replace the Conqueror and have more firepower, so a tank created by mating the FV215 and FV214 would have been completely pointless. The tank was introduced to World of Tanks in 2014, just to fill the British Tired 10 heavy tank role. In 2018, it was replaced by another less than authentic tank, the Super Conqueror, at least on PC. The FV215B remains in the console and Blitz versions of the game. Thank you for watching this Tank Encyclopedia voiced article. Make sure to follow our website, we'll be releasing new articles on the regular. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram or Reddit. If you use Discord, there's a link to our community server in the description. And if you would like to help us continue to develop and expand, consider donating on Patreon or PayPal. All of the funds will be used to help us enhance and design new articles and features for you. Until next time, keep us in your sights.